I don't know if you guys can see this. Hopefully, do you see these white specks? Snow out there, girl. I don't think it's a good sign. Update, I packed up everything and we're leaving the spot. Um, the reason is because I'm pretty tucked in here. He came up here somewhere to this area on the front floorboard. So I took this box out and he ran out the door as soon as I did it. So I'm hoping he's the only one, but he came from the back of the RV. You ready to go inside? What's that smell? Hmm? What's that smell out there, girl? I don't think it's a good sign. Hmm, well, I don't see anything. Not yet. <sighs> well, it's Colorado, summer season in the West. And I woke up to the smell of smoke this morning, which is not a good sign. I don't see any smoke just yet, but I checked my fire app and it shows that there is a fire 27 miles just northwest of where I'm at. 0% um, containment, apparently just started yesterday. Guess I'm gonna be packing up some stuff here. <laughs> at least the grill and the uh, bike. Those are the things that takes a little bit of time to pack up, but it's still 27 miles away. <sighs> I'll just keep a good eye on it and uh, hopefully they can get it contained quickly. Oh, this is the part that I hate about the West. So we had the heat and humidity on the East Coast and storms, there's a tropical storm over there right now, actually. It's coming through. And, whew, sorry, I'm feeling, I tell you, I'm still not acclimated. I get out of breath just like walking over here. I say this, I don't know, it's my little disclaimer. Yes, I understand that I'm, uh, you know, not in the best shape, but I'm not in that bad of shape where I can't freaking breathe, you know? <laughs> it's the altitude, for sure. No smoke I can see visibly, but what I was saying is this happens in the West. Uh, we have fires, unfortunately. It seems to get worse and worse every single year. Uh, we're in a major drought. We have been for a while now. I think this year has been the worst that it's ever been. And, you know, whenever you smell smoke, eventually there's going to be actual smoke over here where you can visibly see it and the air quality uh, gets bad and it's not really good to breathe all that in. So typically I will definitely move if that happens. So another reason why we may pack up and leave, not just because the fire might be right here, um, it is 27 miles away, but if the air quality gets really bad, uh, I would definitely move. I just hate it when I see stuff like that because Unfortunately, we're just coming off of a holiday weekend and this is the time of year when you have people who come out and they just don't respect the land and respect Mother Nature and they'll light campfires and not monitor it and it gets out of control. And this fire started yesterday on a holiday weekend, so they still haven't said how it started or, or what's going on, but... Yeah, it, just, it happens way too frequently. People just have to be so careful. You know, look at this big, huge fire pit that I have right here. People use these all the time and you can see all the brush around me. I mean, one spark, one out of control fire. Uh, it's too big, it's too blazing. This forest is gonna go up. So, ah, oh, yeah. I like a good campfire, but this is also another reason why I don't like campfires. <laughs> because of what it can do to our forest and to people around. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hopefully, do you see these white specks? This was all in my chair and I was getting it off because I thought it rained last night and it was just dirt. Nope, it's ash. See how it's like, see how it moves on there and it kind of um, stains that material? Yeah, that's all ash. That's not good does look a little hazy over there. Oh, goodness. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> Lily. Lily, you wonder what's going on? We're leaving? Yeah. Update, I packed up everything and we're leaving the spot. Um, the reason is because I'm pretty tucked in here 
and uh, it's actually hard for people to see me off the road so if there was an evacuation I don't know I mean surely they would come down here but uh, just in case I'm gonna move to a spot that's a little bit um, easier for me to get out of and uh, not such crazy road because this is a little bit of a crazy road to get into and it's also uh, closer to the main road so if there's an evacuation there's uh, quite a few people typically over in this one area so all right we're headed out uh. <laughs> the oxygen man I'm telling you and then the smoke is just wreaking havoc on breathing There's something back there that's not tied down. You can see uh, the smoke maybe in the distance there. Yeah, not so great. All right, so I figured I would go ahead and get some water while I was out and about. Water over here is free. Oh, it's so windy, let me come back in here. I don't actually need to dump anything right now, pretty good. So I'll wait because you do have to pay for dumping rather than water. And I don't wanna pay for just a small, small amount. So anyways, jump. I uh, took the trash to the dump and getting water and then we'll head to our different campsite. All right, well, we are here in this new spot. Certainly not as pretty as the other spots were. And we've got this, <laughs> I don't know, little industrial site over here, but it's easy access to the main road and still in nature. Not many people over there typically. I do have this RV right here. But we're gonna run out of spots over here. The spot that I was leaving before the road to get out, that's a little weird. And I got so nervous. I didn't film it because it was a disaster, to be honest. It took me two times to get up this really steep kind of incline. It's very rutted out. And, oh my God, there's a huge rock right kind of in the middle. It would have hit the underbelly of my van. So I, uh, kind of had to gun the engine to get up. And the first time everything went crazy in here. Just like shaking and, and I had to roll back down because I couldn't get up. And so the second time I just gunned it even faster and my tires, my back tires were spinning at the end, but my front tires were still going and it had traction onto the street. And so it was pulling me up for sure, but it was spinning back there, just really loose rock. So. I don't think I'm ever gonna go back down there again. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful out. You can see a little bit of the uh, smoke clouds over there too. Mm. So you might be able to see, I found this actually, this block here, and it has a string or rope attached to it. I found this in Maine. I was out of sight, someone left it and I took it. <laughs> hey, it works well to help level. All right, so I don't know what this is over here. It's some kind of a facility. I don't know what facility is, but I never hear anybody over there. So it's really quiet over here actually, which is nice. Lily likes it too, don't you girl? You like it, mama? Hi, pumpkin. Hi. And someone left all this wood over here and it looks like maybe some shavings here for a fire. It was nice of them to leave the wood here. Oh, it's just beautiful outside. So I'm not actually sure how long I'm gonna be over here. Um, we do have the smoke, as you know, and um, some of you guys might be wondering, well, Amber, you're in a van. Why don't you just move, leave away from the area where there could potentially be a fire? It's a great question. So here's my answer. And that's all very true. I'm in a van. I could leave. The fire's not here. It's 25 miles away, roughly. It's going to take a while to get here, even if it does. Uh, we'll have enough time for evacuation notice. 
there's plenty of ways to get out of here. Well, there's two ways to get out of here, um, south and then one that's north, that goes northeast. So we should be fine. So the reason why I'm not leaving is because one, I just don't want to jump ship, like I was just saying. Two, I have packages coming. <laughs> so my packages are supposed to be here by Friday. Once they get here, I can leave. I couldn't actually reroute these packages because they're coming from Amazon and I need to obviously make sure that I get them. Uh, they had already been shipped. Well, there's quite a few RVs over here, just looking. I'm just see over here. This is a big, huge field that's out here and go the streets over here, the streets over here, and it goes all the way back here where there's RVs. The good news is everybody's been pretty quiet and very respectful, so I like that. Anyway, so just waiting on the packages and then we'll, we'll take off. I'm not sure where we're gonna go yet. <sighs> it's just beautiful out here though, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Can't even smell any smoke right now. It's just beautiful. And look at these mountains over here. Isn't that just gorgeous? You have the sun setting over there. One thing you might notice is that I have this cover over my bike, but I also have the Velo sock cover underneath. So the reason why is because the Velo sock is perfect for keeping most of the dirt and debris off of the bike. It's not completely waterproof. I put this extra protection on top of the Velo sock to keep rain off of it because I just want to make sure that that bike stays nice and beautiful, no rust, none of that stuff. So, and the problem with that one, you might ask, well, why don't you just keep the top one on since it's rainproof? Well, the problem is, is that it does not actually cover the whole bike and it's exposed at the bottom. And the Velo sock actually covers the bottom of the bike. So you can see it's all zippered up. It's really nice. So I have two bike covers and that top one's just really easy to get off. It's actually a pretty simple process now, especially because the bike is just so lightweight, which I love. This is the sun going behind the clouds. It's not a regular cloud, that's actually a smoke cloud. Kind of eerie, isn't it? Kind of see it here. That's all smoke. Coming in from that fire, it's like about 24 miles from us now. Oh, it's so weird. Well, I'm currently tearing apart my van because there's a mouse in here. And I think I just got him out. He came up here somewhere to this area on the front floorboard. So I took this box out and he ran out the door as soon as I did it. So I'm hoping he's the only one, but he came from the back of the RV. I've had the screen open all day. So he might've gotten in through that and then ran to the back. Um, I'm hoping that's how he got in. Otherwise, if he got in the back, that sucks. All right, I'm gonna spray some more of this stuff everywhere. Just douse it. Oh, dang it. I hate these mice. All right, traps are set. Um, all I had was <laughs> almond butter. Uh, so hopefully they like almond butter. Usually peanut butter is it. So now I just have to set these things. Hope I don't hurt myself. All right, trap is set. Now it's in the floorboard. He was up here in this compartment right here. And Lily was like laying right here. Crazy girl. I don't know how she couldn't hear him. So I set the trap. Uh, hopefully if there's any more in here, I'll catch them. So what happened is I, I was working right here in my driver's chair. And then all the lights were off in the van, except for this overhead light that's right here. And I got up to go to the bathroom and I saw something like scurry across the floor, like right down there, just across the floor. Oh shoot, that's a mouse. He ran over to the passenger side and then kind of into the front. And so I got out my spray 
that like kind of pepperminty spray that's supposed to keep pests out and sprayed it all around there. And then I opened the passenger door to pull the box out. I just started pulling like things out one by one to see. And then all of a sudden he came out. And so I took everything out of the box. Yeah, there was rat poo and pee down in there. Not a ton, probably like half a day's worth. So I think he just got in today. I shined the light down in the back under the bed to see if there was any rat poo or anything down there. I didn't see anything. Um, there's no food back there. So I bet you anything, he was headed back that way uh, thinking all was clear and I got up and then he scurried back. So I just looked under the hood. I didn't see any rat poo, but I did spray some stuff down in there. And so yeah, I think we'll probably move tomorrow. <laughs> We're not gonna stay in this spot. <sighs> yeah, never ending, isn't it? Last time I was here in Leadville, I got a mouse in the same spot, actually. Well, it's official. Uh, mice like almond butter. <laughs> um, I caught him. It is almost two o'clock in the morning, and I heard the little sound go off, and I've never had to deal with that before. It was so gross. It was gross. Ugh, so now I'm moving because I know there's more. I don't know how that dude got in, but he got in and I don't know if there's more. But we're moving out of the spot or if he came in after I got rid of the other one somehow. I don't know, but I'm going to move. It's the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to figure out a place to go so that I don't have to be in an area where maybe there's a lot of mice over here and I'm gonna set the trap again. It was so gross. <sighs> I can't believe that. <laughs> I was not about to show you the mouse. There was no like, you know, gory things, whatever, like blood or anything. God, it's even hard for me to talk about. But um, he was dead. Uh, so I took him outside. I got my tongs out, which I'll never use again, except for this. Um, I got tongs out to pick up the trap because I didn't even want to put my hand on it. Like I could, um, I had two uh, plastic bags and I put my hand into two plastic bags thinking that maybe I could release it inside the bag. Uh, but what I ended up doing was picking it up with tongs with my gloved hands, with the bags, taking it outside, putting it on the ground, and took the end of the tong and pushed down on the mechanism so that it would release, and then just slowly inched it back so it would, its body would fall off onto the ground. And uh, yeah, so no, well, I guess the birds can have them. Anyways, I moved. I'm down the street. I, there's another little area that you can park in. It's dark outside, so it's very hard to tell what's going on. I put my fog lights on so I could see around me, but I just kind of parked. I think there's like three people over here, um, a little far away from me, but still kind of actually a little bit closer than I would I would typically want to be close to somebody. But I'm just going to stay here until daylight, and then I'll move in the morning and figure something else out. <laughs> it's awful, awful. I can't believe that. I wonder if he's the same mouse or how did he get in? That's what I wish I could figure out. Or if he was just already in here. So anyways, I set the mouse trap again. And, oh, I mean, if there's mice in here, of course I want to get them. But I'm hoping they're all gone and I don't have to deal with it. So um, I'm sure there's a hole somewhere underneath the van. Uh, there's got to be. Else how else would he have gotten in in the middle of the night with all the doors shut? <sighs> all right. Needless to say, I put my shoes down on the ground in case I have to get up again and deal with this. I will tell you, I sat here for probably five minutes. I shined the flashlight on him and I couldn't really see my, my batteries are going out on my flashlight. And then I was like, well, I better turn on the main light. And I saw a little eyes glowing. I was like, oh, and I was like, I could hear him flip flopping a little bit when it first, you know, crunched on him. And sorry if this is gross, guys, but I mean, it's just, I'm telling you what I'm dealing with. Devices are meant to kill very quickly, so I don't like harming even mice, but I don't want them in my rig, you know what I mean? Like, what else are you going to do? They carry disease and they, they tear stuff up, so I finally got the courage to go over there. But before I did that, 
So I, I sat here for like five minutes. I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Like my hair was standing up on my arms. I texted Maury in the middle of the night. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do with this thing? <laughs> and it's in the middle of the night. So, oh my God, poor Maury. He didn't respond yet. So um, I'm sure he's sleeping. I finally went over there. I was like, oh, I need to take him outside, but I need to put pants on, which were on the bench. And my shoes were right by the front door. I didn't want to like go over there. I don't know. I, was, I just didn't want to be near it. You know what I mean? Oh, it's just so gross. So anyways, shoes are down on the floor so I can hop into those quickly if I need to. My pants are over here and uh, <laughs> we'll just deal with it if it happens again. Oh, it's so gross. So gross. So now I'm going to try to get some sleep. I don't know if I will, but hopefully moving made the difference. It's a very sunshiny day today. Did not catch any mice in the middle of the night. Could be good, could be bad, I'm not sure. But I did move over to this other space. So I could have gone over here into this area and there's actually a little road right there, but I didn't see it. So I'm parked next to this guy. <laughs> and I think there's a guy uh, somewhere back here maybe. But anyways, I'm leaving right now. I can tolerate a lot of things, but mice, I get pretty squeamish and I don't know I guess it's because they're like you know they're so quick and they leave mouse droppings and it's gross you can actually catch disease from it and they tear your stuff up in the van wires they you know try to locate food sources and oh it's just a it's a disaster so uh, I just want to reiterate to all of you people out there who are concerned about killing animals I don't like to do it either it's a mouse I get it I don't like doing it either. Several years ago, I stayed in Idaho near Sun Valley in uh, Ketchum, Idaho. And I was trying to do some preventative measure and spraying this peppermint spray around my van. And because I saw literally mice like running around out there. And I'm like, oh, if I spray this around, they won't get in. And some of the peppermint hit one of the mice. And the poor thing started screeching and pain and couldn't breathe and I felt horrible. Oh my gosh, it, I couldn't even stay there that night. I tried to like pick this, the mouse up and take it down by the river to wash it off. Like, I just don't want them in my van. I don't want to kill them. I just don't want them in my van. They can stay outside as much as they want. Just don't come in my van because it's not going to end very well for you. I'm over here cleaning out this front area. So I bought a new box down here because the other one was trashed it's probably a good idea that i cleaned all that out um so i probably will make some adjustments for like i have my shoes in here these are my tennis shoes but i use these often so i just kind of keep them up here um oxygen i won't always have i can probably put that somewhere else so anyways just making a few adjustments but guess what i found Look, right down in here, this is the sliding door. There's poo. Uh, a couple of them. There's another somewhere here. So I have, so I have these bleach wipes and we're just gonna clean all of that up. I don't want that. This is on the outside, but still I don't want it in here and I certainly don't want to attract more. Gross, gross, gross. Make sure if you ever do this that you do it with gloves because you don't obviously want rat poop on your hands. It's actually quite detrimental to us. It can cause disease, cause respiratory issues, so just be careful. All right, gross. So the last things are, is I have mothballs. I put some mothballs out around the van. I'll put some by those steps since I think that's where they're coming in. Uh, I did put one back here next to the door in case I can get into that little small area right there. Okay, and then I put some down here underneath the van right there. So they'll smell it. Hopefully they don't go into the engine compartment. The other thing is, I brought all the big guns. <laughs> so I had this from last year. I'm gonna load it as well, put it in the back, reload that other one tonight, put it in the front, and just 
make sure there's not any more in here.